Motion is universal. We encounter objects moving all the time in our everyday lives. Therefore, it is vital that physicists be able to observe and measure the motion of objects. Physicists study all objects from very small subatomic particles that make up everything, to the planets as they move around the sun, and even our ever-expanding universe itself. Studying the motion of these objects and more gives us important information about the universe we live in. Our most important tool in observing motion comes from our eyes. With our eyes, we can observe objects moving relative to each other, and we can classify objects as moving faster or slower than one another. Take for instance this race between sprinters. We can clearly see some runners that are faster and others that are slower by comparing the positions of the runners. However, our eyes alone cannot answer questions like, how fast are the runners moving? Or, how much faster I would have to run to beat them? To better study the motion of objects, it is important we take quantitative measurements which use measuring tools and numbers to collect more precise data about the motion of objects. With quantitative measurements, we can answer more questions. But first, here are some questions for you to consider. 1. What are some ways you measure the motion of objects in your own life? 2. How is that measurement of motion made? 3. In what ways do you interact with numerical measurements of motion? Pause the video to consider how the measurement of motion appears in your own life. Resume when ready. Let's look at an example of a red ball rolling on a flat surface to begin our process of quantifying motion. First, we will just observe the motion of the red ball on its own. As we can see in the video, it appears that the red ball is moving at a constant speed. However, our eyes can deceive us, and quantitative measurements can provide stronger evidence about the red ball's motion. To determine if the red ball's motion is constant, what quantitative measurements would we need to gather? What tools and processes would you use to gather that information? Pause the video and take a moment to answer these questions. Resume the video when ready. Now there could be many different measurements you could use to determine the motion of the red ball, but two factors must be considered, time and change in position. Measuring time tells us the length of time that the red ball was in motion. Measuring the change in position tells us how far the red ball has moved for the length of time recorded. Let's now use our measurements of time and change in position to quantify the motion of the red ball. First, we will need to use a measuring tool to determine how far the red ball has moved from its starting position to its final position. Here, we will use a meter stick because it provides equal intervals of distance to measure. Second, we must determine how much time has passed. To determine the passage of time, we will use a stopwatch. To most accurately determine the motion of the object, we will measure the position of the object every second. Use the stopwatch and the meter stick measurements in the video to record the position and time in a table. You may want to pause the video as the ball moves across the screen to record positions and times. Resume the video after recording all of the positions and times of the ball as it moves across the screen. Let's take a look at the data we recorded from the movement of the red ball. From the data table, we can now observe that as the red ball moves across the flat surface, it takes the ball 10 seconds to travel 5 meters. As we observe the motion of the ball, we can see that it does not speed up or slow down significantly. We can say the motion of the red ball is constant because the position of the ball changes by 0.5 meters every second. This would mean that the red ball is not faster or slower at any point in its journey. This data confirms that the red ball was moving at a constant speed. There is another way we can envision this data to make more meaning of the red ball's motion. With positions and times recorded in your table, we can now model the motion of the red ball with a graph. We just collected the positions and times of a red ball rolling across a flat surface. We will now model the motion of a red ball by using a position versus time graph. On a position versus time graph, the x-axis records the time of travel for an object in motion, and the y-axis records the position of the object in motion. On the graph, we place a dot for each position recorded and its corresponding time. The first dot is placed at a position of 0 meters and 0 seconds, indicating the starting position and time. At 1 second, the red ball moved to a position of 0 0.5 meters away from its starting position. We will place a dot at 0 0.5 meters on the y-axis above the 1 second mark on the x-axis. Pause the video and continue making dots on the graph until all the data points have been recorded. 
Resume the video after creating your model. Now that you've completed the model of the red ball's motion, take a look at your graph and the shape of the dots. It should be clear that there is a positive linear relationship between the change in position of the red ball and the time spent traveling. We can see this relationship by identifying that the dots make the shape of a line heading in the positive x direction and positive y direction. This linear relationship indicates an important piece about the constant motion of the red ball. Since the red ball has a linear relationship between its change in position and time, the slope of the line will indicate an important measurement about the motion of the object. One way to quickly identify the slope of a line is to analyze the rise of the line compared to the run. Here we see that the red ball increases its position by 0.5 meters on the y-axis. This is the rise in the line. The run in the line is 1 second on the x-axis. When we compare the rise to the run, the result is a rate of 0.5 meters traveled every second. This is a measurement of speed. By modeling the data recorded and analyzing our model, we have determined the speed of the red ball to be 0.5 meters every second. We just collected and recorded the data about the movement of the red ball across a flat surface. However, we don't only live in a universe of flat surfaces. We will now evaluate the blue ball as it rolls down an inclined plane. Use the methods previously introduced to record the motion of the blue ball. One. Use an equal interval tool to measure the change in position of the ball down the ramp. 2. Record the position of the ball every second of movement. 3. Plot the data on a position versus time graph and look for patterns in the data. Pause the video now and complete your new model. Resume the video after completing the model of the blue ball on rolling down an inclined plane. In this video, we explored the motion of a red ball and blue ball rolling on different surfaces. Consider these final questions as you continue your learning. 1. Compare and contrast the model of the red ball's motion to the model of the blue ball's motion. What similarities and differences are there in the models? 2. How does the shape of the graphical model you made show a difference in the type of motion the ball experienced? 3. Which ball is moving faster? What evidence from your model and your data supports your claim? 4. How can we now identify a quantitative number for the motion of each of the balls? 5. What would cause the two balls to move similarly or differently in these scenarios? Thanks for taking the time to explore concepts in physics with us. We'll see you next time.